good afternoon everyone. Welcome to our session M and E Benjamin 2 and Economic Symposium 1. So this session will be discovering title Assuming EV charging behavior to our lifestyle by LIDS EV charges. Presented by the speaker, Mr. Mike Yusin. So um so before I hand over to the floor to the speaker, please be reminded to switch your phone to silent mode and you may raise your question after the session ends. So without further ado, let's welcome to the speaker to your stage. Thank you.
So uh, from 2019 onwards, we start to work on this EV charges. Right? So we call it flexi EV charging. Right? Uh, we are using the parking as our charging facilities. Right? So because we have removed uh, all the coupons and uh, uh, all the machines. So now what else that we can do which is going green, right? Because for the coupons itself, we are saved about 1.4 million uh, tons of uh, papers, right? So now what else that we can go green, which is less petrol. So that's where we actually started the EV charging. Right? So these are some of the common questions that I got whenever people ask me about electric cars. Uh, uh, how many CC is your car? Right? There's no engine, there's actually no CC, right? So it's all the most power only. And how long to charge? Uh, how far can it go? Uh, how about the traffic jam? You know, would it cost uh, worse for the electric car, right? Um, basically, we I drove to Penang uh, on an electric car and a combustion engine. So on an electric car, when there is no jam, I tend to go faster. Right? So the electricity usage is higher during the time. So what happens is that when I reach Penang, I only left about. 7 to 10 percent uh, power, you know, uh, uh, battery life. But during jam, during Hari Raya, I'm actually going back. You know. When I arrive in there, I actually have 25 percent left. You know, you know why? It's because that for combustion engine, when your car is idle, your engine is still running. The petrol is still going in, it's still burning fuel, right? But for electric car, when your car is idle. Your motor is actually not using anything, nothing is using electricity except your aircon, which is very little. So when during that jam, right, it's not a auto standstill jam, right? it's still can move a bit. So but you don't tend to like step along uh, on the accelerator where you actually save power. So when you arrive when, when I when I arrive the negative time, I still have 25%. Compared to usually I got about 8%, 10% like that. You know? So I actually uh, it is actually more saving. A lot of people are very scared to drive electric car during uh, during Hari Raya, Chinese New Year, because uh, they were listening to all those China uh, behavior where people can't find charging stations and they got stranded, right? So uh, queuing up for charging stations and so on. But uh, in this case, uh, for for my case, it's actually uh, much saving you know, because the distance is not too far. Right? Okay, so before I start anything. I think we should go through some terminologies uh, where everybody has to understand on the electric vehicle terminologies, right? Uh, EV stands for electric vehicle, PHEV stands for plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. Uh, charging speed usually is in kilowatt, right? Uh, which is equivalent to kind of like liter per hour, like how fast you can pump your petrol into the car, right? So like or liter per minute, or liter per second, whatever time. Uh, time stamp you want to use, right? so that is the charging speed. Another one is the capacity, which is the kilowatt hour. It's the same as your house usage uh, power, right? For example, you use uh, 10 kilowatt hour. Uh, every kilowatt hour is 20 cent. Huh? It means every hour in that whole hour, you are actually using 10 kilowatt. So in one hour, you call 10 kilowatt hour. So that's the capacity, which is like in the petrol, which is the liter, right? How many liters are there? Right? So there are three components to an AC charging system, right? There are three components to it. The first one is the charging station itself, right? So let's say the charging station says it's the 22 kilowatt charging station. It simply means that it can output maximum of 22 kilowatt, right? So uh, a charging station is actually a dumb device, uh, basically. Uh, it's like a power switch at your house. It's like a socket, but this socket can deliver at 32 ampere three phase. You know? So that's why you can go up to uh, 32 kilowatt. So basically, what happens is that the car will tell the charger to turn on. So the charger supply 240 volts into the car. The charger is actually inside the car, not the charging station. Although it's actually called a charging station, right? So, but it's actually an electrical plug. So, um, like it's the same thing uh, when you go to airport, right? You want to charge your phone, they call it a charging station. So what they do, they prepare a bunch of 3 plugs for you, right? But they call it a charging station, right? So same thing here. So this one's a supply 240 volts in the car, and the car has something called onboard charger. So this onboard charger, if it's rated 11 kilowatt, it means that even though you can supply 22, your car can only take 11, right? So that's what it means right here, right? 
And the other thing is your battery capacity. Say it's 40 kilowatt hour with the hour here capacity, right? So it just simply means that if let's say it's charging 11 kilowatt, 40 kilowatt hour you give up by 11 kilowatt, you got 3.6 hours. So this is like 0 to 100, and nobody drives that can't use 0, right? Usually when you're until 20, you already panic already, right? So uh, from 0 to 100, it will take about 3.6 hours. Let's say it's half of them, it will be like 2 hours of basically. So this is uh, what it means by these three components combined together. So for the EV capacity, say it's uh, 40,000 watt, which is 40 kilowatt. So what it means is that if let's say the usage is 160 watt hour per km, this is like your petrol engine where you have like liter per 100 km, uh, uh, km per liter kind of thing. You know? So let's say the usage is 160 watt for 1 km. So in 40, 40 kilowatt, you get up by 160, you get 250 km. So it means that the whole battery can go for 250 km. Right? So this is all the terminologies of AC charging. So uh, because if I don't give this, right, everybody will start asking me like, how far it can go, you know, how fast to charge, you know, uh, and so on. Right? Okay. The other thing that I wanted to point out here is the driving behavior. So this is a plug-in hybrid, right? It's the same car, but at different temperature or different ways of driving, 100% charge give me a different KM. Right? So this one is when my wife sent the kids to school, she's waiting at the school, you know, uh, driving slow, a lot of traffic jam, so it give me 20, 29 km. This one is during the weekend, where I drive further a bit without stopping and it's very smooth traffic. So I can get 49 km, you know, the next charge. You know. So these are estimations, right? So a lot of people say that, how come when I charge at this station, I get 260 km max, but I charge at the other station, I only get 200 km. It's because it's all because of the driving behavior. The car is trying to estimate how much it can go. So that's the reason. So it's the same battery, same car, but it can be 29 or 49. Right? The range can be so huge. You know, because it's a plug-in hybrid, it's only 12 kilowatt. Right? Same thing goes to EV cars. It can go to um, maybe 400 km or 450 km or even 500 km, depending on how you drive the car. Right. So. Um, yeah, so sometimes when the manufacturer tells you that the car can go for 600 km, then when you buy the car, you can only get 450 you know? You don't curse the manufacturer because of the way of you drive the car and the condition, right? Especially those people who stay in Penang, distance is very short but very jet, you know? So you get much less range. But once you go into highway, you get a further range. But if you speed up to 150 to 200 km per hour, you get shorter range, right? So that's... Uh, that's how these uh, numbers come about. Okay, so there are these are all the types of charging ports. You know, uh, I do see like in the uh, ST, you know, the Suran Jaya Tanaga or the EC Energy Commission, they also have this playlist, right? So these uh, these are a few types. But in Malaysia, we are following a uh, Europe standard where we are actually using Type Two most of the parts, right? And even Tesla coming in, some of them are high cool, but some of them are actually uh, different types of Tesla connectors, right? So uh, these are type two for AC and this is DC. So what's the difference between AC and DC here, uh, which I will explain later, right? So um, all our flexi EV chargers, we are using a type two connector, right? And they are all AC chargers, right? It can be used by plug-in hybrids and also electric vehicle, uh, pure electric vehicle, right? Plug-in hybrids like BMW, Volvo, Mercedes, Renault, Kia, Hyundai, Porsche, all this, uh, some of them are uh, full electric. You know? So all these can use this type 2 charging. Okay? Okay, so DC charging usually are much faster. Right? So uh, they are called CCS, you know, combination uh, charging system. Right? So usually it's more than 30 kilowatt. So it's either 30, 50, 180, and so on. Right? So it depends on the capability of the DC, uh, DC chargers. Right? So the DC chargers are much faster but it can only be charged by the EV, not the plug-in hybrid. Right? And at the same time, if you charge DC every day with your, to your car, your car battery will not last you that long. Right? So it will break, uh, you will have to replace the battery sooner and so on. Right? Because of DC is actually very harmful for the vehicle. And it's just like your phone, when you're always fast charging it, your phone battery will die faster. Right? A slow charging will actually uh, have the phone 
to be able to last longer. Same thing goes for car, right? But don't worry, because car manufacturer give you like six years to eight years warranty. I'm sure you need a six years to eight years warranty the battery will not spoil. Right? They have done the calculation. Yeah. Okay, so these are the types of AC chargers that we supply, 7 kilowatt, 32 kilowatt. Then if you want to know how long uh, each of these uh, charging will be, like for plug-in hybrids, on board charger is 3.7 kilowatt. So even though we are able to supply 7 or 32, it can only take in 3.7 kilowatt. So it will take 2.4 hours and the distance is about 30 km to can drive the car. Right? If uh, 40 kilowatt on board charger with a 7 kilowatt charger, uh, these are like Nissan Leaf, you know, so you will take about 6 hours to 7 hours, which you can go for about 250 km. Uh, those at 60 kW and with the 11 kW on board charger, you know, like those, uh, some BMWs, you know, or Kia, you know, Honor, electric, you know, so it will take about 6 hours, which can drive for about 275 km. And 80 kW, 11 kW charger, these are like the Tesla and so on, can go for about uh, 500 km. And some of them with the 22 kW, uh, like a Porsche Taycan, right? Some of them with 22 kilowatt, it'll take about four hours, which can also go to about 500 km, right? So, uh, why we are actually using AC chargers is because uh, we are talking about uh, destination chargers. What is a destination chargers, right? Destination chargers are locations where you go that's the destination where you want to be, like for example, a shopping mall uh, or any of the offices that you park your car there or you go to hotels, you know, those theme parks, you know, those are destination charges, right, where you will park your car there for a long time. So you do not need a DC charger. So most of this is all using DC charges, right? Uh, before I go to this slide, um, you guys want to hear the good news first or the bad news first? Mm -hmm. right? Want to hear the good news first or bad news first? Bad news first. Okay. So we go for this one. I'm going to skip that one because that one is good news on the same side as well. Okay, so what's the uh, pro and cons of having an EV, right? So I'll tell you the bad news first, right? The con, right? Probably cannot go too far, depending on the car battery, right? Like for example, Nissan Leaf can only go 275 km. You probably can reach Nepal. You cannot go to Penang, you know? Or here you probably can go down to Malacca. You can't go to Johor, right? You need to stop by and charge somewhere. That's the bad news, right? And also, um, there's actually not enough charging stations, right? Um, as an EV driver myself, the biggest problem that I have is not whether fast or slow charging. It's whether or not is there a charger, you know? And also, a lot of times when you arrive there, there's a non-charging car at the location, you know? Like, uh, uh, sorry to say, my ear, right? Or Alza or something, you know, that actually take that spot, I couldn't charge, you know? But, to them, it's like they still have petrol station, but to me, if I don't charge, I cannot go anywhere. Right? So I have to stay there and wait for him to come out, then I go and charge the car. Right? So that's the bad part. Right? Um, also, a lot of people say battery is expensive, uh, but I have never changed a battery before. I drive only electric cars, right? right? And also, car is also expensive. Right? And another thing is no sound. Right? So the car has no sound. You can't show, right? You know, the Porsche Taycan there, you cannot go. Uh, nobody can hear you. Right? You're just so quiet, right? So no sound. So these are the cons, right? And also, like for example, this is the lowest that I ever driven, five percent, right? Uh, my uncle here has driven uh, down to three percent, two percent. You know, so it's some people in the forum say they can go negative eight percent. You know, so I don't dare to try out, but here already panic, ready, and here. Like, but I know that I can arrive there, I know there's a charger in my house, so it's okay. Right? So what's the pro? Right? Basically, we don't need to worry about uh, no petrol in the morning. What I mean here is that like you fully charge your car every night, or maybe you charge up to 90%, 80%, you can see it. Right? You don't need to worry that, you know, I need to go for a meeting, I need to rush, but I still need to go find a petrol station. And early in the morning when I go to petrol station, everybody is lining up there. Right? Or maybe tomorrow, Petrol increase price, everybody go like up. Right? So I think some of us also did that before like when you reach the petrol station, you can't pump, right? So many people trying to uh, try to pump petrol just because they want to save two ringgit, you know? So right, so that's the thing, like, no, no more worry about petrol station, right? And uh, no need to go to petrol station, <laughs> right? And it's cheaper than petrol. 
uh, electricity when we charge, like in this car, full charge, can go for about 450 to 500km. If you take petrol in, it will cost you about 200, 200 ringgit. But full charge this car is costing you about like 50 ringgit to 70 ringgit. Right? So it's, it's much cheaper than petrol. Right? And it's very responsive and it's smooth driving, no gear change, and it's just smooth. So when you drive back, petrol only the gear change, you don't need to feel the fun. Right? Uh, I actually like it no sound. It's a pro and cons also like no sound. Right? And the best thing is no smell, you know, no smell of petrols, uh, no more gasoline smell anymore, right? and no service required. Right? So basically, there are more pros and cons. Right? So uh, this is what we tried, right? So we have tried from Sha'alam to Kanga. Kanga is in Belize, right? So what we did is uh, we go all the way. This two day two day trip because we have a meeting in uh, Majlis Kanga, uh, right? So we went to Penang for a fast charging, 180 kilowatt. Then we go all the way to Kanga. There was no more charges there. Just go to Kanga, spend one day, you know, uh, after the meeting and everything. Then we come back to Penang, full charge, and we go back. Actually, we can go back all the way to Shalama. It's just that we just top up that, you know, uh, our area with the taxi recharging, you know, with the CPR, you know. So we just go in there and charge for one hour and then come back, right? So this is uh, the fast charging state because we want quick, right? Uh, we also try Shah Alam to Ipoh one day trip, yeah? so go to Ipoh, charge, go to Ipoh use about 50% power, right? You just need another 50% to come back, but you just go there and charge right? because you're just afraid that not enough, right? And since we are going to have lunch there, so we have lunch, we charge for one, hour, one or two hours, then we come back. So we also go to Penang, one day trip, you know? Uh, go to Penang, go here, 30 minutes of fast charging, can get about 80 plus percent. Then we come back, we talk back with UTC, another one hour, then we come back straight away to Shama. So it's not a problem to drive far uh, using an EV actually. Okay. So what is the ideal EV experience? Right? Uh, a lot of people came up with the idea, built charging stations, charging hubs where you can park your car there, charge for you go and drink some coffee, then come back and drive. That's not ideal, right? That's actually not ideal. Those are designed by petrol-driven car person. You keep thinking that want to go back to the petrol station. That is not true, right? Uh, we don't want petrol station anymore. What I want is I charge when I park. Wherever I go, there is a charging station, you know? You have to take the mindset away from going to petrol station, which is something called charging station anymore. So when I park at home, I charge. When I go to work, I charge. When I go to lunch, to the charging station I put there, I charge. I just go to lunch, I come back, I got the range that I need to go. Right? When I go to shopping, I charge. When I go to movie or whatever, it is, I charge. So that's the ideal. Even if I stop at traffic light, if can also, I want to charge. Right? So just that uh, technology not there yet wait for wireless charging. Right? So this is a, uh, I would say this would be the ideal case. But the problem with Malaysia today is that we don't have enough new charges. Right? So we need more. We need more to actually kind of support the uh, uh, ecosystem. So uh, what's flexi EV charging here? Right? Is that we are trying to build more charges everywhere so that more users can use the charger. Wherever they go, they can charge. Right? So what is so different about this flexi EV charging is that we are actually building chargers at municipal parking area because flexi parking started off with municipal parking where like Shalam, Sivan Jaya, Kutani Jaya, KL, everywhere, all the roadside parkings, you can pay parking with flexi parking. So now we want to convert some of these parking lots into electric charging uh, bays where electric car can go there and charge, right? So that's the difference. Because most of the charging station you see today is either inside the petrol station, inside the mall, you know, inside offices somewhere, right? Nobody there to put the charger outside there, right? So we wanted to try and see whether there are any using happen now, right? So these are examples of uh, user payment, right? So the payment rates is all by minute block, right? So like I said, we will detect the car on board charger because uh, I can tell you that flexi EV charging is the only charges that is able to do this. 
or other charges, they only charge at one rate, right? So either the most expensive rate or the cheapest rate or somewhere in the middle. So what happened is that if let's say someone charge at 22 kilowatt, they pay 40 cents per minute, okay lah, right? So because they are charging fast. But the plug-in hybrid go in there and charge at 40 cents per minute is not worth it, right? It's too expensive, right? Okay? So uh, if I charge at 8 cents per minute for the plug-in hybrids, then someone drive a full EV there and charge, I will lose money. Right? So it doesn't work that way, so that's the reason why we have to create multi-tier charging. Right? And uh, we don't charge by kilowatt hour, it's because the Malaysian law doesn't allow us to restart power. Only TMD allows to restart. Right? So we can't charge by kilowatt hour. So that's the reason why we charge by minute. Right? There's another one very interesting which is not charging, we have to charge them 4 cents. Right? Why we are doing this? Because that we want people to finish charging and move the car away for some other people to charge. Right? So is to get people to have the correct behavior, right? So, um, and we will actually send them a notification if the car is actually fully charged, right? So the user should know that the car is fully charged, and they should move the car away. The first five minutes, we give them free, right? After five minutes, we start charging them four cents per minute. So this rate, the user cannot choose. It's actually selected by the charging station because of the car request that particular power. So these are some of the deployment examples. We have some we have some which are at the open areas, you know, under the hot sun. We have some which are inside the building as well. Right. And uh, yeah. So these are some of the condominium areas, so we actually install some of these charges here. So how are we going to achieve this by putting more charges, right? Um, we are not selling charges. Right? So basically we are giving charges for free to any condominiums that require you, to any offices, to any of the parking operators, parking locations. We are actually giving out free, right? Provided that it's for public use. Uh, if personal use, we have to charge up. We have to, you know, like I give you a charger for free and one person gives and I cannot mark up so, so I have to charge it. So basically for this one, we are actually giving free if for the uh, for the purpose of public use. So as long as actually a lot of people can use, use the app to go and pay for it, we are going to give free, right? And um, we are actually creating a charging network from our public parking space, you know, for with the municipalities as well. Uh, we are working very closely with local governments and also private companies to achieve this, right? So that uh, people who drive EVs, they can actually park anywhere and charge. Uh, trying to re realize the, the, the idea of, um, you know, I charge when I park. Okay, so that's all I have. Uh, any questions that you want to ask me? Or if not, then you can come to our booth to learn more about the safety charging. Any question? If you ask a very good question, we give you a gift from our booth. Any question also can, don't worry. There's no stupid question. If you give me a stupid question, I cannot answer. I'm very stupid. Yeah. Okay, so you know then that's it.